The Pittsburgh Pirates enter an important week of baseball, starting off with the Cincinnati Reds. How can they put a win streak together? You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody, to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every single day. My name is Ethan Smith. That's Gary Morgan joining you every single Monday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. You'll hear about this line later because I pre-recorded the ad. Shh, shh. Nobody say anything. Uh, but Pirates money line over at FanDuel.com tonight. Under eight and a half total runs. Paul Skeens over seven and a half strikeouts and a first inning tie. Could win you $48.22 on a $10 bet. So make sure you go to FanDuel.com. Go bet on that today because, you know, go make some free money. Usually Paul Skeens hits, and I saw that 78% of the bets, Gary, are on the Pittsburgh Pirates to defeat the Cincinnati Reds tonight as both of these teams, and we'll talk about this later in the show, enter with the exact same record. And a lot of people have said the NL wild card is stupid. I think it's great. I think it's magical for baseball to have all these teams involved. And the Pittsburgh Pirates folks had a series over the weekend that I'm going to quickly recap and Gary will give quick thoughts on. Um, they won the two games that I didn't expect them to win and lost the game that they I thought they for sure would win uh, by quite a bit. Uh, baseball is fun. You can go from literally getting curb stomped to curb stomping your opponent the very next day. And they beat a team they should beat. What were your thoughts from over the weekend? They did, they did what they're supposed to do against the Colorado Rockies. They won, they won the series and it almost doesn't matter how, you know, yeah. I mean, you need to win two or three. You need to win a series against an under 500 team. You'd love the sweep, but you got you to gotta do what you got to do, and they did it. Yeah, and they did. They found ways to do it in very uncharacteristic uh, fashion, in a, in a way of sorts, with the bullpen games. But what's good about this week, bullpen games, they'll be there, I think. I think they'll be around, but at least in this Red Series, they won't be. And now they've won a game again, and I keep saying it almost every day, Gary. I sit here and I say it almost every day that this team is a win streak away from everybody feeling so much better about them. And when I mean a win streak, I'm not talking seven or eight games. I'm not talking a 10-game win streak for a week and a half where they go on a tear. Win three or four in a row. That And it's a lot easier said than done. I think a lot of people agree with that, especially against a Reds team that, we'll talk about it later, kind of scares me in this matchup a little bit with certain things going on. But... At the end of the day, a win streak would be nice for this team, obviously being three games under 500. How do they do it, do you think, Gary? How do you think that they can kind of pull a couple of games in a row together instead of kind of just this 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one that we've kind of seen lately? I mean, it would help to to not have to be messing with the bullpen as much as they are, I would think. Agreed. Um, even though they're winning these bullpen games, it is taxing the bullpen, and it's at least making them make odd choices with mm -hmm. the bullpen in some of those other games when you're trying to close out a series or you're trying to win the rubber match or you're trying to win the middle game of the series. You, you, you're making odd choices because you know you, you've put yourself in a certain situation, and it's bitten them more often in the games that you're supposed to win than the games that you think you're, you're kind of taking a flyer on those bullpen games. So I think they need to get away from those again, which means you need Martin Perez to get healthy. You need, you need them to get back to having five starters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Jared Jones needs to eh, be Jared Jones a little bit again, you know, the league's pushing back on him, and he needs to, he needs to kind of accept that and, and push right on back through it. So I'm not too worried about his velocity, but the spin rate has been down a little bit. So that usually is a sign of fatigue. I think that's to be expected with Jarrett Jones. So we'll see how he pushes through here, and maybe the the all-star break will wind up being a nice reset for him. You know, he could wind up getting a full two weeks off and 
But you need a good winning streak before then, and I think they have the tools there to do it. Yeah, and the tool, and I don't think that that's been really the argument from anybody at this point is that they have the tools to do it. I mean, this is a team that has a start, even with being down a starter with Skeens, Falter, Jones, and Keller. You're still feeling pretty confident in a lot of those games that you have the pitching advantage in a lot of those games. Then the bullpen game comes along, and you're kind of just you're kind of just doing this. You're like, hopefully nothing goes crazy in those games. And I'll even speak on it for a minute just because I kind of want to blend the two topics together because I feel like there's a lot to talk about with what happened over the past week. Me and you were there last Saturday, not this past, like this past Saturday, but the Saturday before when they did the Majinski Ortiz thing. And it worked. They did it again, and it worked. And I know that it's taxing at least a little bit, but those guys I think are a little different seeing as they do have uh, starting pitching backgrounds and can do that and be out for one or two days and then come back and be able to pitch, especially Majinski in those spots because he's only going, what, about an inning and a third usually or inning and two thirds. And then Ortiz has looked impressive. And I was talking about this, I believe, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, where he was being used in a wrong fashion. I thought that bringing him in with runners on was a massive mistake. He likes to come on when runners are not in scoring position, when he has a clean slate to work with. And the last two times we've seen him in these spots with Majinski opening for him, it's been pretty good. Now, obviously, it is against the Twins and the Rockies, two teams that offenses could be a little bit better. But you don't really look at that. You say... Ortiz pitched four plus innings in both of those games and looked pretty damn good in doing so. Yeah. Well, Ortiz is all about the walks, right? And, and he's only had one walk in his last, I think four outings. So that's, that's Ortiz when he's at his best. And and when he is at his best, you could easily confuse him for a rotation piece. And when he's not at his best, you could easily confuse him for a DFA candidate. (laughs) Right. So, um, I, I'm very happy that he's given them the contribution he has. He's actually had a pretty good season, really, all, all along. Uh, he's been one of the most consistent bullpen arms they've had. Um, so he's he's filled a hole, and I, I don't mind them using him and Majinski here and there. In fact, I think that might be a good thing to think about keeping in your back pocket when you do have a five-man rotation because – you can throw one of those games every once in a while and just push everybody back by a day. And Mm -hmm. that, that kind of creates that five days of rest that you want for Skeens and Jones. So I think that's a a great tool to discover. I hope they don't squander Josh Fleming. He did a great job too. So we'll see if they keep him around. Yeah. And there's a lot to like about what we saw over the past week. There's a lot to not like, which we'll get in the next part of the show. But I do like what we're starting to kind of see is this bullpen has been the talk of the town for like the last, I'd say, month because of what's been happening with that middle relief, kind of just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. But this isn't the first time that Ben Charrington has done that, folks. We've seen Ben Charrington do this before where he's just kind of finding things that he thinks could work and hopefully they work and stick. It sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. But that's why a lot of these guys, some people say who when they see like Justin Brule or say who when they see Dennis Santana. This is why those guys still have jobs because teams just straight up need arms sometimes. And that's what the Pirates are doing right now. They straight up just need relief arms with everything going on. Missing Ryan Barucki, who I think has been one of the bigger losses they've had all season as far as injuries are concerned, because he was a very steady force in that middle relief last year. You look at Dowry Moretta being out all year. These are guys that otherwise you wouldn't really think all about that much, but boy, would it be nice to have them right now, Gary. If you had those two guys in your middle relief, I don't think there'd be a ton of questions if they were performing up to the level that we've seen them perform from, uh, especially when they're healthy. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, the bullpen's definitely taken some hits, but I'd also say this is why I encourage people to try at least once in a while to watch baseball in other markets. Yeah, uh, I think if you did first, you, you wouldn't even blink at most of these relief things that go on throughout a season. This is everywhere. Every team does this. Every single one of them. 
even the Dodgers. The Dodgers just threw, geez, who did they just throw at us? Two former pirate cast offs at us, like in that series. I mean, like, yeah, it was uh, Anthony Bonda, and I forgot who the other guy was. Yeah, Ramirez, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Ramirez. Yeah, yeah Johan Ramirez. Yeah, so I mean, like that's that's kind of the the life of, in baseball, and bullpens come together like that. You have some linchpins. You know, you go out and you get some guys that that you trust and you you develop some guys like Majinski and Nicholas will probably be around in that bullpen for years to come. David Bednar will be around for a while. You know, Holderman's going to be around for a while. So you have some linchpins there. But Barucky, this is probably his last year as a pirate. Mm -hmm. Free agent next year. You know, like, and then he'll float around somewhere else. And who knows, maybe he'll fail at his next stop. And then maybe he'll come back as a, as a pickup off the waiver wire. I mean, like that's the way bullpens are in baseball period. Yeah. And sticking with these topics that we're going to talk about over the past week, we've kind of talked about some of the good that we've seen. Let's stick with like, let's talk about some stuff that you guys probably like hearing more than the good, the bad in just a second. Today's episode of Locked On Pirates is brought to you by FanDuel. Make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On for all of your betting needs this baseball season because summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more. And you can bet on all of it at FanDuel because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet that wins. That's 200 bucks. You can use the bet on everything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now because FanDuel has their own made same game parlay tonight for Pirates Reds where you could pick the Pirates money line under eight and a half total runs, Paul Skeens over seven and a half strikeouts and a first inning tie. You can bet that right now and win some real cash over at FanDuel. So make sure to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to add a big win to your summer bucket list because FanDuel is America's number one sports book and an official sponsor of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode of Locked On Pirates is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Make sure you go to Prize Picks right now and do everything that you need to do to win some money on baseball today. Because as usual with Prize Picks, you can bet on all things. On all you have to do is just do more or less on player stat projections and watch your winnings roll in. Because with Prize Picks, you can turn $10 into 1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. We like things being fast in this world now, so you can do that. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. You can now win up to 100 times your money with baseball-only lineups on prize picks. If you submit a winning lineup featuring four demon squares, you'll cash in big time on the biggest moments of baseball's early season. If you want to see Paul Skeen strike a bunch of guys out, you think Ellie De La Cruz is going to have a stolen base against the Pirates, or if you think O'Neill Cruz will have a long ball, you can bet on all that tonight on prize picks. So download. The app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. All righty, folks, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every single day. Make sure you go check out Locked On Sports Today, your 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. And Amazon Fire TV talking about everything going on in the world of sports. NBA finals are still going on. The uh, Stanley Cup finals are still going on. And baseball is about to be the only sport you got on unless you watch the USFL. So that's what's going on in the world of sports. And as far as what went wrong uh, this week, uh, this past week, uh, I'm just going to be very blunt with you, Gary. I hate losing to the Cardinals. The Cardinals are probably in my top five hate, most hated teams in all of sports. 
And those two games they lost, I think were especially frustrating for a lot of reasons, just because one, you looked at the scores of those games and it was four to two and four to three on Wednesday and Thursday. And you had Falter and Keller pitch and they both pitched fine, but it felt like the offense kind of reverted back to the ter- the terrible offense that we've seen a couple times. And that's bound to happen every once in a while, especially with this team and how up and down they are sometimes offensively. It just frustrates me to no end when you get those great starts. And I looked it up prior to that series. Now, I don't know if this is still a thing or not. Prior to that series, the Pirates were third in baseball and quality starts from their starting pitching. That usually would mean better things. And on my Friday show, especially after this series, when I was on a tirade about it, I said the two things can be true about this team is where they're at right now at three games under 500 feels unacceptable, but it is also okay to understand that the arrow is consistently pointing in the upwards direction with what they have on the roster. Do you still feel that way now with them pretty much being in the same spot they were when they began the week? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I do. Yeah. I mean, the starting rotation is still the strength of the team, and they've had spells where the offense has cost them wins. They've had spells where the bullpen has cost them wins. And the starting rotation hasn't really joined that party. You know, they've they've been really solid the whole time. A couple here and there, but that's going to happen. They, they've been really consistent. As long as you have that, man, to me, that is the absolute hardest thing to get. And when you have that, when you have what I consider to be talent that is just underperforming offensively, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as concerned as you would think I I should be, I guess. I, I think they will go on a little run here. They're certainly, I think on a little run here of winning series, they've won, I think four of the last five. It's three of the last four or four of the last five. I can't remember what they did prior to the twin series. Yeah, off the top of my head, it's one of those good sounding numbers. But Mm -hmm. either way, that's that's what you want. They're you know, they're you want their last ten to always look like six and four, seven and three. You know, you that's what you want. Win series. Focus on winning series. That's where this team's head needs to be. We can all scoreboard watch because we're stupid. They need to be focusing on, like, we're playing three against the Reds. We want two of three, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And go get those two of three. Don't worry about losing one of them. <laughs> like, Yeah. And, and I think that's a great motto to have because I explained this to somebody the other day who's a big Pirates fan, and they were asking me, why can't they ever sweep? And I said, well, pa- pause for a second. And you mentioned three out of the last four, and this is – a great segue into the point. And yeah, it was three of the last four because they beat the Dodgers before defeating the twins in the series. Two and one is okay. You're two and one. You won two of the three games, but you keep multiplying that number folks. And we all hopefully passed math in middle school and high school when it got to multiplying, multiply it by two, that's four and two. Then you get to six and three, then you get to eight and four and so on. If they can stay on a pace where they're winning three out of four series for a month, it's a pretty good pace to be on, especially if you're not getting swept. I mean, the Pirates haven't been swept in a minute from what I can remember. I mean, it's been a while since they got swept, really, at all. I think it was the A's. Yeah, I think the Oakland Athletics in late April was the last time they didn't win win a game in a series. And then you look and not to like scoreboard watch or anything, but you look at the next couple weeks and we're going to get to this in the final segment a little bit deeper, but you have Cincinnati, Tampa Bay, Cincinnati, Atlanta. You've already proven you could play with Atlanta. Tampa Bay on the surface doesn't look like the Tampa Bay Rays of old that we've seen with everything going on. And then we don't know Cincinnati yet. We haven't played Cincinnati yet, which feels awfully weird with the new schedule, not having played one of your closest division rivals until the end of June. But I do think that eventually, and I agree with you too, there is a lot of underperformance going on. Key Brian Hayes, for instance, who had a tear in the last two months of the season last year is having arguably one of his worst offensive seasons he's had to date. 
I don't think he's going to be that bad forever. And also, we're not going to speculate on certain things here at all. I'm not going to speculate about anything health-wise with him at all. There are certain actions, though, that he has where I'm like, okay, that's not very key Brian Hayes-like. So th something does feel off, but at the end of the day, I think he's a guy you'll eventually see him come up. You look at some of the other guys, O'Neill Cruz, for instance. You've seen the best of O'Neill Cruz, Gary. We've seen what O'Neill Cruz can be. We've also seen O'Neill Cruz at his worst at times. Can he eventually kind of move that needle a little closer to the best version of himself instead of kind of being here on a lot of parts? And like it or not, folks, and what I've been talking about for the last month, this team badly needs left-handed power, and they're finally somewhat getting it from the two guys we hope to get it from a little bit in Sawinski and Telez over this past couple of weeks. That's big. It's very big for what the Pirates need and what they want. And also, go get Ryan McMahon, please, because I want Ryan McMahon very bad. I mean, the, This team in particular, the Reds, these teams couldn't be close, more closely matched. Mm -hmm. The records are like exactly the same. They've got, let's see, in the division here, they are 8-8. Eight and eight. The Pirates are 8-9. and nine. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the Pirates are 14-15 and 15 against teams over 500. The Reds are 12-19. and 19. The Bucks have a terrible run differential of negative 28. The Reds are plus 13. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can pitch. They can hit. This should be a pretty good matchup. They really should, and and I'm looking forward to it. I I think our horses are are more capable of running the race, but um, mostly because I think we have the pitching. Yeah. So I I think the season will shake them out, but right now they're dead even. That's what the season's taken them to. Yeah, and we're going to discuss the Cincinnati Red Series in a little bit a little bit deeper, and I'm going to bring up something that may be a little bit rash but also scares me a little bit going into the series in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Pirates is also brought to you by Supply House. Supply House is the website that's made for the skilled trade to order supplies now. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple clicks at supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the United States. If you need help with an order, you can get industry-leading after-sales service from their friendly and knowledgeable customer support team. And the best part, you get to talk to a real person every time. And there's great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors. Being a pro has its perks because you can trade industry professionals or if you're a trade industry professional, sorry, you can join their free trade master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Over a hundred thousand pros already trust the trade master program to deliver results. So apply for your membership today and get a competitive edge on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save time and money when you order online, order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com from real people with real service. And thank you to Supply House for sponsoring today's episode. Also, thank you to FanDuel and Prize Picks for sponsoring today's episode. And uh, Stephen Offenbaker of Locked on Reds has already begun the chirping. Uh, you guys love him over there at Locked on Reds. I'm sure we'll be talking on uh, Thursday about this series uh, in its entirety. Quick rundown. Uh, it'll be Spears versus Skeens. Uh, on tonight's game, if my phone would load, I don't remember the other two matchups, but I know it's uh, Keller and Falter, I believe, that are going. Yeah, Falter and Lodolo, and then I believe it's Green versus Keller. Yes, that is correct. This, I agree with you. I, I think this team, the Pirates, can pitch better than the Reds can. I think the Reds' bullpen is kind of shaky in terms of what's going on. They've dealt with a lot of injuries this year as well. Is it is it right of me, Gary, to be absolutely petrified of this team and their stolen base potential versus the Pirates? <laughs> like, or is that is that like a, okay of me to be absolutely scared crapless that the Reds are just going to steal like twenty bags this series against it's our a, catchers? It's a facet of the game that they're 
really, really good at. So no, you shouldn't be afraid or you shouldn't be afraid to, to talk about it or worry about it. It's something to be scared of. Um, I do think Skeens does a really good job of holding guys on. Um, and the, and people are afraid to run on the velocity, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do think there's a certain level of, um, at least they're going to want to see him a little bit, I think, before they test him too much. Also, he doesn't really put guys on base. So no. I think that's probably the best way to not con to control a running game is to just not put people on base. And that's kind of the point of the good starting pitching, right? They don't put guys on base a lot. So Mitch Keller is somebody that um, I would think will probably worry about it more with than, than um, Skeens because – he will work around a lineup a little bit and he will put guys on. And, and I think that that can get out of control a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about our catchers having anything to do with controlling the running game because they don't, they haven't done anything all year. We don't have anybody capable of doing anything. So I don't care. Jason yeah. delay is probably the best catcher they've had this whole year as far as throwing runners out. Yeah, agreed. And hopefully we don't get a uh, Jose Trevino performance from any of those guys, like with ha what happened with the Red Sox last night, breaking their franchise record with nine stolen bases. It's kind of what was in my head when I was watching that game. I said, oh, God, this is a precursor to this series. Interesting tidbit tonight, though. Uh, Skeens will obviously make his first start against the Reds. Pretty big deal. Uh, Carson Spears has not made a start yet this year. He has pitched a little bit, but he has not made a start. So this will be his first start. And I do think it's going to be fun with this series. There's a lot of young talent everywhere in this series. And finally, I've done, I've done this show now for four years. And O'Neill Cruz came up and we were all excited. And then Ellie De La Cruz came up and the Reds were excited. We finally get that matchup tonight. And I think that's going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be fun to see those two guys kind of go at each other a little bit, seeing as, you know, they've just, for whatever reason, been constantly compared to each other by Reds and Pirates fans, even though, to me, they're completely different players in how they play. Uh, Ellie obviously being a switch hitter, Cruz being a left-handed hitter, very different players. But going to be a little fun to see those guys finally get to play each other for the first time, Gary. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of people that um, picked the dog in this fight, you know, and mm -hmm. decided which one sucked and which one was great, like a long time ago. Um, you know, I've been excited about Ellie De La Cruz for quite some time. I've talked about him for years now, as mm -hmm. far as being one of my favorite prospects in baseball. So, um, yeah, I'm not excited to think about him killing our team for, for four or five years. That said, he hasn't really been killing anyone. No. You know, he's 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 had a, a fine rookie season. Um, they have reason to be excited. The tools are there, but he's got a lot to figure out yet, too. He does. And um, for instance, I don't think he'll touch Paul Skeens. I really don't. Um, I think he'll struggle against Bailey Falter. <laughs> so... I mean, like there, there's a couple matchups there that just aren't favorable for him. I'm not sure you're going to get to see the best of him this this series. Yeah, and that brings up the stolen base thing. Is I mean, it's it's hard to make an impact with stolen bases if you can't get on base. I mean, it's why Estuary Ruiz last year for the Athletics was cool to watch, but if he didn't get on base, he was rendered useless for a lot right. a large part uh, portion of things. And the Pirates have a certain player like that too on their team, and Juan Bay. I mean. You can't get on base. You can't use your speed. So, and he's afraid to steal too. So there's that. He, but God, I remember the Thursday game. Trust me, against the Giants when we stole with one out, and he looked like he was just like afraid to try to do anything. Obviously, a couple weeks ago, but it's okay. Uh, one final thought on this series, Gary, before we wrap up today. What do you think? Kind of the overarching theme of the next three games will be between the Reds and Pirates. Mostly that uh, the Reds are going to struggle to hit. And if they struggle to hit, I don't think they have the bullpen or the starting pitching to compete with the pirates. I think, I think the pirates have a better chance of sweeping this series than they do losing two of three. Good deal for me. I think again, I think the offense really for the pirates can dictate how this series goes. I'm not all worried about the pitching. As you said, I think the pitching will do just fine. 
offense is going to have to score runs. I mean, the runs are what ultimately wins you the game. And I think Skeens will pitch well tonight. He has shown me no reason that he won't. He's done very good specifically against divisional opponents so far. So you like to see that. And then you have Falter and uh, Keller who have just been steady pre uh, presences in that rotation. And it's a rotation that for me, I think going into every series, and we've said this a lot, you're going to feel like you have the pitching advantage. And if the offense can come out, especially against a guy, as I mentioned earlier, and Carson Spears, who's getting his first start of the season and attack him early, I like our chances. And then you have a lefty in Lodolo. We know how the lefties are with the Pirates. So we'll see what they do over the next couple of days against the Cincinnati Reds in a very big series where both teams enter at 34 and 37. So somebody's going to come out with a better record than the other after these three games. Gary, what you got going on this week over at uh, all of your outlets that we always love to tune into? Well, Steel City Pirates, five thoughts will come out later on today. Um, there's already a series preview up uh, from uh, Michael, and then he'll do his pitcher spotlight to um, probably talk a little bit about what you're going to see tonight with the rookie. Um, and let's see on my show, the Pirates Fan Forum this week, I'm going to have Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds on, and we're going to kind of do a little, we're going to play a little draft game within the NL mm -hmm. Central, um, geared towards improving our individual teams. We're just going to pluck players from other teams. It'll be fun. Yeah, that's all, uh, definitely something we've done in the past before about talking about that in our NL Central previews as to what player you would steal from each team. And I think I'd have my answer right now, but maybe I'll talk about that on the Twitterverse. So make sure you go follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked on Pirates. Follow Gary at GaryMo2007. Follow the writing stuff at Steel City Pirates and the Pirates Fan Forum at Pirates Fan Forum. Have a beautiful rest of your Monday, folks. Tune in tomorrow. But until then, we'll see you on the flip side.